We're live. Here we go. Welcome to Out of the Parks with John Marks. I am your co-host, Sam Stafford, alongside, of course, John Marks, formerly of Marks and Reese on WIP Afternoons. And then the one, the only Maniac Malloy to my left right here. And every single Wednesday, we're going to be meeting with you guys. We're going to talk Phillies. We're going to talk MLB. We're going to get some questions from you guys and give you some picks. So tune in there. But guys, we uh, announced the show yesterday. And when we did the announcement, we were talking Bryce Harper, this team, they weren't looking so hot. And we were like, maybe the announcement of us will give this team some oomph. And man, did it work. Bryce Harper, three for four last night, three home runs, one including a grand slam. What do you guys think about that? I'll take the credit for it, guys. Uh, I think we said it yesterday. What is our record going to be coming off the game the night before? We're 1-0. and 1-0. So I'll take it. And was there ever a doubt Bryce Harper 0-11? Uh, they had to fix the railing and put it higher so he didn't injure himself. And he comes out, home run, home run. That third home run that he had, bases loaded. He works the count. He swings at a ball 3-1. I know Maniac Malloy was angry at him. I was. Swinging at that pitch. But for whatever reason, I don't ever remember an athlete in this city rising to the occasion in moments like that. And he did it again last night. Was there ever a doubt? I Working in the media for so long, you kind of get hardened and getting older. You kind of get hardened to being a fan where you you, know, you don't really like the players as much as maybe you used to. I love Bryce Harper. I'm totally different. I'm like a kid when it comes to Bryce Harper. You got a little what man crush on him, a little man crush. I love Bryce Harper. I lo- he's, he's amazing, and he did it again last night. And they needed it, too. They needed it. They needed it. Um, and, you know, Pinto, he rolled up in the Pinto on uh, uh, in the fourth inning. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this guy. I mean, maybe he can be a little, little, little boost to the bullpen. I mean, I hope he's probably going back to Rochester this afternoon, but we'll see. Let's see if we can go one and out last night to start after the announcement. And now, first show, we got to get a win this afternoon. Well, so you talked about that, Pat, that you mentioned the bullpen. So up until this point, last night excluded has been pretty rough. For this team. And it's actually very ironic because MLB Network uh, made them their number one ranked bullpen going into this season, which I think all of us were kind of like, don't jinx us. Please don't say that. And um, it seems like it actually happened. Yeah. Uh, and they believe me, they needed it last night. Um, and Ricardo Pinto, uh, yeah, I, he came in the game and I'm like, why do I remember him? Was he a Philly at one point? And I Googled it. It's like, yeah, that's right. He was a he was he was in their farm system. He pitched for him a couple times. You see, he was. I mean, this is one of these storylines already that he was in Korea, he was in Japan, he was in the Mexican League. He hasn't pitched in the major since 2019. He arrives in the fourth inning, fifth inning, and he has a four inning save. I mean, exactly how we we drew it up to get their second win of the season last night. But the bullpen, to your point, Sam, the bullpen is going to have to. Step it up and Alvarado Dominguez again, you know, like kind of starting the season. I was worried they were going to put him in last night, but then Bryce hit the hit the home run and kind of gave him some breathing room. But the bullpen's always going to be a concern to me. I I need to see. I am a huge fan of Gregory Soto. I really am. I believe in this guy. I don't think that he was used properly last year. I think that Craig Kimbrell won that job and he he won it fair and square. He took the role and he was doing pretty well in until the role he <laughs> until he did it. Right. Yeah, but I want to see what Greg Soto can do as that lefty fireballer. Him and Alvarado, I, I mean, I think to, like last year coming into the season, they accounted for like 90 percent of, of fastballs over 100 miles an hour. I mean, with those two dudes, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, some, somewhere along the, in there, that, that should be locked down. No problems. We need to get Gregory Soto locked into a role right right early early because last year he couldn't find his role and i don't think he ever ended up being used properly and he's off to a pretty good start so far gregory is mr soto so we'll see if he can kind of fit in where he's supposed to when they gave him that big contract yeah and also with bullpens i remember pat gillick used to talk about this where sometimes relievers can be so year to year you think about Alvarado. He was in AAA a couple of years ago during the season, and then he became one of the best relievers in the league. And the same thing with Soto. This could be the year where Soto is unhittable, and they're going to need it. And to your point about the roles, you never really knew what he was last year, right? right? Like you didn't. He was never used really late in games, and when he was used, he was kind of erratic. So this could be one of these year-to-year things where Soto becomes the guy that maybe Alvarado was a couple of years ago. They're going to need him. 
and and with with the roles you know you see a closer come in in a non-save situation and, and and it seems like they don't have the same stuff they don't have the same concentration i don't i don't know what it is they don't they don't perform as well it's like kind of the same thing that guy was the closer for the tigers for a number of years and then he comes to the phillies and he's pitching in the fifth sixth inning i, I think that's a lot to adjust to so hopefully he can get into a role as a setup man more towards the end of the game and, and make a difference for the team well and we also mentioned uh the explosiveness that Pinto kind of gave this bullpen last night. And I think that's one important piece to this bullpen because they do on paper have a good lineup out there to come out and help. Boy, Ellie De La Cruz looked pretty bad though last night, didn't he? And he, and he struck out three times the night before. What's going on with him? Well, that could be the weather for Ellie right there. The because weather, it, weather well, guy, I mean, it big is weather one of the guy. Things, it is one of the things that I have been like, maybe this team will get better when it warms up, you know, but Bryce obviously proved us wrong, but he did have some extra layers last night. So maybe that's what helped him there. Now with but, the superstition attached to baseball, does he have to wear the, the shiesty mask now today and, and the rest of the year until he. Well, it's really cold out still. So I, I would and rainy if they get the game in today. So I would assume he's going to wear it again today. But to your point, Maniac Malloy, I don't know if in July if we're going to see him wearing that. But if he's hitting three home runs every night, then maybe he should wear that. He could wear whatever every time he wants if he's going to do that. Yeah, but looking at this bullpen, oh, bullpen, so everybody coming out is going to have to play their part, and that's something that hurt them last year with injuries and then guys, like you said, uh, not carrying their weight that they were expected to going into it. Connor Brogdon, how long do you think that this guy stays on the team? Well, how he's gone. He, they, he, he's he gone. Pinto's well, in. Pinto, but we... He's, He's he got DFA'd. So, oh wow. Yeah, he's gone. See ya. He gone. Wow, I missed that. Okay, so I thought Pinto would go back down, and then Brogdon might get another chance here and there. But DFA'd. I'm sure that's not the last we've seen. Well, he's DFA'd. So, but and they mean that means that he he can if nobody claims him, he can accept being sent to the minors, and yeah. he's just not on the 40 man roster. It was it, it's a shame because Brogdon showed so much promise two years ago, and then. Like a lot of relievers, you just lose your control. And he, it was, it was sad watching him pitch the other the other day. It really was. I mean, you could just tell he had no shot. And I mean, that was it. That was it for him. So at this point with this team, and you're already seeing this, they're not giving they're not giving guys like Brogdon a lot of a lot of rope to where they can figure it out early in the season. You gotta win these games, right? Yeah. So I'm not freaking out because they're they're two and three or, or anything like that just yet, but you can't afford to have Brogdon in there they need these relievers to pitch and to come in and throw strikes at least now moving over to the other pitching staff the starting rotation has performed beautifully to this point besides Aaron Nola how concerned should we be on that one only 6.9 more years right John <laughs> 6.9 yes Nine. only 6.9 more years of Aaron I, I'm not concerned at all because if you realize what Aaron Nola is you're going to get these starts. I don't think we're going to see a lot of Aaron Nola that we saw where he's having a, a sub three ERA. I think really you're looking at a, a three and a half, four ERA guy. And here, here's the problem with it is if you're relying on him to be your number two starter, then he might be coming up short for you in a lot of these games uh, as he loses velocity and he doesn't have his command. And that's what, what plagued him in his first start. He didn't have his command. He becomes over reliant or on his off-speed stuff because he doesn't want to throw the fastball. Guys sit on it, boom. He's given up a ton of home runs. Um, I still think he's a quality starter. I think he's more of a three than a two. Ugh. But, you know, like... He's getting paid one money. You no, know, well, I mean, he's making 25 a year. They space it out. But, like, you know, I don't love the contract. But ultimately, I think we're going to get the same Aaron Nola that we that we got last year. So you say he's more of a three than a two. So who do you move up? Are you saying on this current rotation or would they have to pull somebody in to bring that number? On this staff, I, I, I firmly believe that I said this all offseason that I was disappointed that the Phillies didn't upgrade their rotation. I see what the Braves did. And they brought in Chris Sale. They really didn't give up. They gave up a good prospect for him. But they didn't give up, a, you know, a top, top prospect for him. And it's a little bit of a gamble. He's coming off of, of major injuries, and he really hasn't been healthy for a couple of years, but his velocity's back up. He gives you some upside. I just don't know where the upside in a potential rotation piece comes from other than a trade. Because the rotation itself, a lot of people will, will say, well, look at the rotation as a whole, all five. It's got good depth. It's a good five-man rotation. I just don't like the top of it outside of Wheeler. I don't like Nola at number two. I think you need a better. I think you need a better number two, and Nola just at this point isn't that guy. 
I agree with you. Based off of his history, he has been very inconsistent. So I don't think that you're wrong in saying that. And I do think most of this fan base is pretty upset that we didn't see them get anybody. I think we were all waiting for that big Blake move. Blake Snell. That, yeah, Blake Snell would have been that huge one. I don't know if people actually thought that was realistic, but that's who people wanted for sure. How about Spencer Turnbull? That's one guy we, we're not talking about. Spencer Turnbull throw, throws a, a nice game for us last night and the night before, Christopher Sanchez. He, he looked pretty good. Those are two guys that you're not really expecting much from, but I do have an idea here. Let's you know how the Philly, you know, you, we got our, our certain words, our slang, John, Bull, yo, yo, <laughs> that young bull. Yo. We need to do like Randy Wolfpack up in up in right field with the Fandemic crew. We got to get Bull, Alpha, the Spencer, Term Bulls, the Bulls, and everybody dressed like young bulls and bring the young bull. It's a shame it's not coming out of the pen. With, 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 with that. He, he might. Maybe. He might, if, if we do get somebody, maybe he would. We need the Bulls. Play. We need well, to get the Bulls together. To your point, early in the season when there's going to be more seats are available as well, if we're going to try to make a statement like this and start <laughs> this club, it's probably a good idea to do it early rather than later because anything could happen. He could be not good and lose his spot in the rotation. But to your point, if you look at, the, if you look at who pits last night for the Phillies, Spencer Turnbull and, and Pinto. Pinto, who hasn't been in the, hasn't been in the majors since 2019, he was pitching in the Mexican League last year. So, I mean, just how we drew it up, get that's the beauty of baseball. Get a win last night, yeah. You're gonna see something you probably have never seen before. Almost every single game you go to, and you may not see it again. I don't think we're ever gonna see a guy, maybe in the Phillies uniform, show up in the fourth inning, come in the dugout, say, "Hey, what's going on, Topper?" and then run out to the bullpen and then come in and throw four short shutout innings. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. I didn't not shut out innings, but get the save. four hey, four inning save. I mean, that's truly legendary, legendary stuff. To start this season, they haven't looked so hot like we mentioned. Um, how concerned are you guys with that? We've seen base running uh, errors. We've seen just sloppy play. Um, not really that it's his fault, but Bryce even going over the fence and he already had a stiff back. That's not something you want to see. So do you, are you guys concerned with the start that we've seen so far? I'm not. Uh, Bryce is, I mean, it, it's, it's how he's going to play. And I, you know, I don't know if we give, other players in this town, the excuses that we give Bryce Harper. I know I do. <laughs> He's already on a 13 year contract and he wants an extension. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, give him an extension. Sounds good to me. I, I don't know who else I do that with. Make him part owner. But I mean, if, if they could, they probably would. <laughs> but when you look at Bryce Harper, to your point, Sam, keeping him healthy. And I, I thought bringing him in from the outfield and putting him at first base would, would lessen the chances of him getting injured. And then he goes flying over the flying over the railing and he hurts himself. But man, he's one violent swing away from from hurting his back or tweaking his back or whatever. So I really just think you have to kind of hold your breath and 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 just hope that he's OK. They do have they have Derek Hall down in the minors that can come in up and play first base in case something happened to him. And you can let him play DH, but you can let uh, Bryce play DH a little bit as well. But yeah, I mean, as as the Phillies go, as Bryce Harper goes, the Phillies go, and they've been pretty good the last couple of years when he's been out in playing well without him in the lineup. But you know, you got to keep him healthy. He really is like he showed last night. He can carry this team when he's hot. He carries the team. A hundred percent, especially in those mid season June days where everybody just wants to get lax of days cool. It's definitely Bryce that picks them up and keeps them going. Um, Maniac, I know you were furious with uh Johan Rojas's base running error the other night. I mean, what does he do? <laughs> like what I mean, I know he can catch fly balls and he's fast as all get out, but like I don't how much how how much longer can they 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 do this? I I, I don't know. I guess somebody made the comparison uh, this past week about comparing him to being the Carlos Ruiz of, of this team, because Ruiz was such a, you know, a, a great backstop, a, a great defensive, you know, player. And, and that's kind of, Oh, well, you know, Rojas is the Ruiz of, of the Phillies this year. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not buying that, that because Ruiz could actually, Ruiz could actually hit a little bit. And then not to, to mention you know, the other night getting picked off after you get put in to be a pinch runner. That's yeah. like the cardinal sin of cardinal sins in baseball. So I don't know. I think the guys, he's really pressing right now. And that's not a good situation you want to be in as a young player trying to, you know, kind of rewrite the, the, the story from last year and 
to be to be making those mistakes like that 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 can't happen and that was a huge moment in the game that was a huge moment in the game first and second nobody out and you get picked off come on man i i i followed rojas uh as a minor leaguer and he was always this guy that had a lot of potential but outside of he had a, he had a really good year at at, at double a he, he didn't play a lot of a lot of high minor league baseball right and and Sam, we were talking about this yesterday yeah. sam had said it's they brought him up out of desperation and he actually performed a lot better than they thought so they left him in there i remember in 93 the phillies brought up kevin stocker because they literally couldn't find a shortstop that could field the ball right kevin stocker wasn't a great prospect he wasn't thought that he was going to be brought up and help the team he fielded the ball. He didn't kill him with the plate. Rojas, that's what he did last year until the playoffs started. You can't have a hole in your lineup. I don't care if he's batting 11th in, a, in, a, in, in the lineup. You can't have a hole in the lineup where he's going up there and he's got no chance. And he just doesn't look like he's had a chance at the plate. So I would expect, and, and Pat, what you're saying about the base running mistakes, you can't have that. So if the defense is there and he's not making mistakes, he's got to show some kind of progress at the plate. And right now, I just see him going backwards. And the problem is, is that now he's gotten in these big moments, and he's been a, a an integral part of the team where he's had the play in the, in the uh, NLDS yeah. against the Braves. And like, it's almost like with a pitcher, you know, when you bring a pitcher up, you know, too early, and they get shelled, and then you send him back down to AAA, you could lose him. You could lose him all together. I think if he ends up in Lehigh Valley, that's gonna, trouble. That could be yeah. trouble. So that's why they're they're trying to force it. But now he's pressing a little bit, and I think it's only a matter of time until you see Brandon Marsh as your everyday center fielder. And I wouldn't be mad about that. I love Marshy. And he can hit left yeah. and right-handed pitching. There, there's mm -hmm. this thing about him that they say, you know, he they got to not play him against lefties. But I, I watched him on opening day, absolutely he hit nuke, the first home run. nuke yep. a ball into left center field. So I against think, the wind, too. That was an impressive yeah. bomb. I think there might still be some stigma around him because when we did get him from the Angels, he was known for his defense, and he wasn't or didn't have a good bat at all until he came in here with Kevin Long. So I think that's also a big, big factor for him, um, our hitting coach. But to your point, John, also with uh, Rojas, Larry Boa once told me, he was like, Sam, I was not, because obviously I was not around when uh, Larry Boa was playing, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But um, he did mention, he was like, Sam, I was not the best shortstop that you would ever see. He was like, I was the hardest working. I would play with broken fingers because I knew I wasn't the best. Right. And in baseball, it is 90% luck. And if you end up getting injured and you take that week out and somebody comes in and gets hot, your spot's gone. So Rojas better be careful in that factor. Because like you mentioned, last year he did come up, he performed, and he won that spot or that chance, I should say, um, well, to be able to prove himself. But he's not doing it right now. Well, you mentioned Larry Boa not being the greatest shortstop. I, I have words, another concern. Words, don't come for me. Not him, him saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fact, fact, fact. Yeah. So my, my, my big concern right now, truly, Trey Turner as the shortstop of this team. I, we saw him make a lot of errors last year. We are so spoiled to have had Jimmy Rollins yeah. play for so many years and make very difficult plays look easy. I mean, he, he was just truly unbelievable. And then, to even follow that up with Freddie Galvis, who was a really, really good shortstop at, at one point, he was he couldn't hit his way out of a wet paper bag, but he was great. Freddie was a great, yeah. great in the field, and now you're maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm a little jaded, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Trey Turner at some point or another make the transition to second Shifting. base. Yeah, we talked about a lot about that last year. Also, one more thing on center field. Number Christian Pache is on this team. Yeah. That and he's a right-handed right handed bat, so you could very easily have a platoon of Marsh playing left and center, and Pache's going against the tough left-hander. So. Yeah, and that was the discussion in the beginning of the spring, who was going to win that kind of platoon spot, either Pache or Rojas. And, and he's, they, on the, he's on the roster for a reason. Well, yeah. and there, it was kind of interesting, just because Rojas didn't have the hottest bat in the spring, so it did look like Pache kind of won it, but there must be something that we didn't see or something that the organization liked of Rojas because they gave it to him. I think they like his speed and his defense. His and what defense. they what they yeah. want to do is they want to give him a chance. They want to give him a chance. Yeah. And they're not going to do it's it way after too five early. games. Yeah, they're not going to do it after five games. But if we're 20 games in, I mean, he doesn't have a hit this year. So, like, Bryce didn't have a hit till last night either. But if we're 20 games in and he's batting 110 and he it's just a hole in the bottom of the lineup, they're gonna they're gonna probably send him the triple A and they're gonna have a combination of Pache and Marsh. I like to call him an AO automatic out. AO. Oh. 
Rojas. Ayo. He's batting in the AO spot, <laughs> automatic really, out okay. spot. Um, before we wrap up this Philly spot, guys, we're going to normally have like a minor league spotlight because we are big farm system people. Um, unfortunately, we were going to look at Mick Abel after a start yesterday. That game got postponed. So hopefully they get it in tonight. Uh, Mick Abel is obviously somebody that's very sought after in this farm system and could help this rotation later in the year. Well, Taiwan Walker, there's a name we didn't talk about yep. at all, too. I mean, right. that's that's probably why you're going to maybe get to see Mick is, is if Taiwan isn't healthy or doesn't come back, you know, looking like the Taiwan from the Mets a few years ago, <laughs> which is, I mean, I have no idea what to, what to make of him. So I, I would like to see Mick and, and when are we going to see Andrew Painter? And what's the, he's, he's out um, for the whole year, next year, next year, next year. So um, we have a whole year to wait for him. I don't even know. Will he be back spring 2025? Yeah. I or think so. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't even think they're at this point. I don't even think they're trying to, no, push him back this year, which is which is a shame. When I was when I was talking about upside, who could potentially be the number two? There's not yeah. anybody on the staff. Painter could be right in a short term, especially he gets hot. He could have been that guy. And I feel like the Phillies thought he was. He I was going to say maybe that's why they didn't make the move because they know they have Abel right there. They know they have Painter um, in a year, so that could be why if Snell wanted a longer type contract or a few years or who knows who they were discussing with. Jordan but, Montgomery. Yeah, they, they, and they also they also made a play for the Japanese as a. Is it Yamamoto? Uh, Yamamoto? They made a play for him. They were, thank they, God they didn't they, get him because he's, he's been getting shelled. Man, he's he's been getting shelled. He's coming up stylish, though. You see him with that Chanel bag or whatever. It's like 7,500. He looks good. Yeah, he, he <laughs> made he looks, a lot of money. He That's what the they money. say look good, feel good, play good, but that ain't adding up right yet um, for him. Around, but okay, we'll see. Speaking around the league, uh, City Connect jerseys get debuted on Friday. Philly's got leaked. And have you guys seen them? I have them right here on my phone. We'll put them in. Well, yeah, the I've post. seen them. You you don't like them. I, than what I expect. I absolutely not what you expected. No, hate the blue and yellow guys. I hated the Eagles blue and yellow throwbacks. I hate the blue oh, and God. yellow. This has like Percy Jackson font. You know that like Percy, <laughs> Percy the Lightning Jackson font. font. <laughs> yeah, I I hate these jerseys so much. Am I the only one? You I, I would, they look like the Union almost. They are my, the I, Philadelphia they do Union. Look like Union. My reaction was, that, is that a Union inspired? Yeah. Jersey? Like, so here, here's where I go when I see any of these jerseys. Like, what is the person thinking when it's like, all right, this is what I want to do? Like, what was the initial thought of this is what we want to do? Because like, I like some of the, the Sixers jerseys that they come out with or whatever. But like, my my initial reaction was, what the hell's that? Like, why is that the jersey? I don't know. I'm Ooh, not. I'm not running that, out to get brother. One. What is that, yeah, brother? I'm not running out to get one. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm not running out to get one of those yeah, either. But I, I want to see what the hats look like. That's one thing that has not leaked yet is what the hats will be like. I'm more of a that hat might fan set anyway. the that might set the tone. That might set the the whole ensemble off. You never know. We got to see the hats and the pants. What are the pants going to look like? You know, okay, we got to see fair. the whole. Let's not judge it quite yet. But yeah, it is off to a, a kind of rocky what start. What does it look City like Connect. on the field in action as opposed to just the leak shot? Yeah. We saw fair point, Maniac Malloy. Getting a little, we just got plugged in a little bit more. They're all the way over I there. I think the one, Sam. Yours. Well, yeah, the. Uh, but the moving on to MLB. Um, so there have been some teams that have come out to a hot start. And um, surprisingly, the other side of the state, Pittsburgh, they came out to a hot start last year as well. So we'll we'll see how the how it goes. Yeah. But um, yeah, looking really good. And I'm actually shocked. Pat always makes fun of me because I love O'Neill Cruz because he was I the love original. Him too. He was the original Ellie De La Cruz. I like the and guy. He got injured last year, but he is beefing up. Yeah, he can hit. He can hit bombs. He's he always been able nukes. to hit, but is he going to stay a shortstop? We were talking about shortstops earlier. Yeah. How do you stay that big? He's like 6'6", six, six, and now he's, he's gained. Uh, yeah, he's gained a yeah, Where are you going to play? Outfield? You're going to do the outfield. Tatis move, move in the right gray, field? Gray, third. Gray, gray, third? Well, I, I, I thought I thought Bone was going to be too big to play third. G generally, you don't get 6'5", third baseman. Where they're they're functional the over there, and he's actually worked really hard. He, he's, his defense has improved. He's real good. But he... He stands out. He he is massive. I think he. Ends he's up the same height as those two guys. I think they're right. both six five, right? Yeah. So I, what does he look like when six, he's six, when, five, when he's thirty? Yeah. yeah. What does he look like when he's thirty? That's true. But I don't know. Oh well, we're live. Uh, well, yeah, we're. Oh, we're, we're live. live. Well, we're listen, live. because we're available in all podcast forms. Yeah, you'll be right? able to listen to this one. So wherever yeah. you get your podcast, you're able to do it. But 
Um, you just can't see our pretty faces, unfortunately, for the moment. Well, but listen, and I've always been told that I don't have a face for radio, so it's nice <laughs> to actually be a, be, be in, in front of the camera. Sam, you as well. I mean, we're we're in, and and I mean, most handsome guy here. Yeah, maybe best looking mullet. The flow for the TV. I mean, did I wear the perfect shirt though for today? You did, and the maybe that's shirt. something we didn't talk about with Bryce Harper too. Maybe he did have that umph because he was lit up about Joel Embiid coming back. You never know. I think he was also lit up about uh, striking out with uh, yeah chance to 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 tie the game the yeah. night night before. I think he was good and pissed off, <laughs> and uh, they better run and hide for the next couple he weeks because if he's on, baby, and and, and he. It, it it's so he's he's odd as a baseball player because he's constantly tinkering with his stance and everything that he does. Yeah. Like, but once he gets in that comfort zone, look out. Yeah. That's what we saw last look night. Look out. Look out. A hundred percent. So we were talking MLB. Is there anything that's really stuck out to you guys that you want to hit on? For for me, I, I mean, I've been watching late night the Dodgers play. I, I've been watching this team and I've been Tuning into the Yankees a little bit. They were on ESPN. Man, both of those teams, they look. I mean, that Dodgers lineup, Teoscar Hernandez, he's he's like a whole new player getting out of Seattle. He looks unbelievable. Mookie Betts leading the league in home runs and walks. Freddie Freeman. It's roster and it's like well how could you possibly lose it's like when the phillies had the had the aces like, well, how, how can you not win the world right. series with that starting staff and then you realize like everybody goes cold at once or like mm -hmm. guys aren't necessarily happy in their role because you have too many sluggers but it's a scary team man. and and the same with the yankees too soto they add verdugo judge john carlo and then the, the young guys that they Volpe. got too, volpe Oswaldo Cabrera, like all those guys, like they, they they've got a real potent lineup. Soto, and pitching will be their thing. Soto is in a much like Judge a couple of years ago. He's in a, he's in a walk year. Yeah, and he could do some real damage. You saw what Judge did in a walk year. Yeah, a and it's only three twelve down the line in Yankee Stadium for him. He's just gonna yank, and they're gonna go. Well, that's one thing we uh, talked about a little bit yesterday, just with the Phillies opening against the Braves. The Braves are obviously one of the elite teams and we just mentioned some of the other ones and that's something that is going to be different for this Phillies team the years past it didn't matter if we won the division because it worked out for us we ended up playing the right teams we beat the Braves um but this year you got to be kind of cognizant like really cognizant of it because of the fact that you don't have to just worry about the Braves in the National League you have to worry about the Dodgers again because they are huge 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 obstacle that you're going to have to beat yeah, you got to almost hope for that uh that that trend to continue where you get the week off for, with the wild card teams, yeah. and then I mean, there's something they're about they're take, taking a week off mm -hmm. that could help. And I, I hate to to think that way because, like yesterday, I was telling you, I mean, the expectation I think for the Phillies should be to win the division, to try to win the division. John, I know you disagree with me, and you know it's it's not <laughs> realistic to think that you can compete with the Braves, but why not? I mean, we we we've. we've We've gone further than in the playoffs the last two years. We've we've seemingly can beat them in a series when it really matters. Let's just do that in the regular season. I, I'm not I'm not telling you that it, that shouldn't be the expectation. Of course, that should be that's what you're going for, right? I'm just talking about from my perspective. I don't think the Phillies are as good of a team as the Braves. So I'm not looking at looking for them to win 98, 97, 96 games. However, and I know they don't play the division teams as much as they once did. But if you look at the other teams in the division, the Mets are winless. Miami's winless. And I think the Nats have one win. Yeah. So you could see, you could really beat up on your own division to where in previous years, and it's still early. So we'll see what happens with, with, with the Marlins, but they struggled against Miami, you know, like the nationals, they, for the most part have beat up on and the Mets at least were formidable. But now that they've taken a step back, the division doesn't look as hot as it once did. And that could help the Phillies pile up these wins that you're talking about. Yeah, we need them. We need to, we need to pile up the wins in the NL East. No, well, and no talking about, about that, we do have three games coming up this weekend. 
um, at the Nationals. So that'll be something. Hopefully, it's a booster and gets them back to 500 potentially. We'll yeah. see if they get the game in today. Um, got moved to 405 instead of 105, so kind of threw us a little. Yes, we were expecting track. to be kind of leading. In yeah, the yeah, game. yeah. I was all really, really excited. I had to, had to dial it down a little bit and, and <laughs> save my energy for 4 o'clock now. Um, and so now out of the parks with John Marks. Hey, that's the name wonder. of the pod. That's the name of the pod. The name of the show, John, it's time to go out of the parks with John Marks where each show John is going to pick a Philly to hit a home run in the upcoming weekend series this weekend. Like Sam said, we're going to nationals park. It's the Phillies. It's the nationals. John, who's hitting a home run for the Phillies this weekend. We got a few former Nats might come into play. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you could pick the other team. You could pick let's get creative with this, but you know, you might have one right off the bat here, I'm sure. Well, I do. And in it would be easy to pick Bryce Harper to hit a, hit a home run as he did th three last night and also Kyle Schwarber. I'm bullish on Alec Bohm. And I think you're going to get you're going to get pretty nice numbers if you're yeah. looking for Bohm to go deep. So if you're looking for one of these like all right, I want to go Harper, I don't want to go Schwarber because the numbers aren't as good. Alec Bohm really impressed me last year. And if you look at what he did coming off of the, you know, like coming off of that era where he had, you know, get me to bleep out of here, <laughs> whatever, like in a city like Philadelphia, sometimes it can be impossible to recover from that. He handled it well. He owned it. He didn't act like he didn't say it. But he turned into a really clutch and excellent player last year. So is the power going to eventually come? Yeah, I, I think it's going to come a little bit. He's never going to be a 35 home run guy, but I think he's got sneaky power and you might see a little bit more of it this year. So to answer your question, Alec Bohm out of the parks with John Marks. Bam. Your Let's first one. Let's make the first one a one shot, one kill, John. I really like that. I like Alec Bohm for, for a home run, especially against the Nats. And you mentioned that he doesn't hit a lot of home runs. My dad always said the third <laughs> baseman on, on the baseball team, your third baseman on the Phillies, you got to hit home you runs. That's one guy. thing. So I would like to see him get off to an early start and start hitting some dingers here because the third baseman, man, you got to hit. You got to have some power. Have you got to have some power. He He's really good for the dying quail or the mm -hmm. uh, banjo shot, which I like, and, and he doesn't strike out too much. But we, we need to get those power numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. Let's get those numbers up, Alec. Start yeah. this weekend for Johnny, please. I yeah. tried to kind of throw the, uh, the lob up for what I thought. I said former Nats we got on this team. You got Harper and Schwarber, like you mentioned, but Trey, Trey Turner. Trey Turner. Let's go with Trey Turner. Let's go he Trey Turner. Light it up. We saw last year um, he just needed that extra motivation and know the city was behind him. So maybe. So Sam's going with Trey Turner. So I got to give, I got to give one. I, I, would, get, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if one. we were actually supposed to. I just. Yeah, well, I like Trey Turner. Yeah. I like Trey Turner. He's got Thanks, power, guys. man. That guy swings so, so hard. He swings insanely hard. If he runs into one. Left center, boom, gone. And he doesn't look like a guy that should be hitting as many home runs as he does. Just when you look at him at bat, but he, to your point, he generates a lot of power bat with that speed. bat yep. speed. Bat speed is insane. My dad always said, him. mechanics. You don't have to look the part if you have the right mechanics. That's true. And That's from true. a right-handed hitter, it, it's normally the lefty is who you see with it's a smooth swing, and they're able to just kind of knock it over the right field wall. But Trey Turner does it from the other side, which is interesting. I'm going with Brandon Marsh. Marsh man get two on the season. I, I, I like him. I like him. He looks like he's swinging a nice, nice bat. Made some some nice contact last night. And uh, let's let's go, Brandon Marsh. We're, awesome. we're going to bet him every game of the series against the Nats to hit a home run. So that that's my pick. I like it. Um, just a reminder for everybody listening. We do have a 25% live profit boost every single Wednesday. Live profit boost. Really? Yes, There's live a full slate. There's a full slate of games too today, today yeah. and tonight. So what you do is with that one is wait for the game to start. Well, maybe you watch an inning or two. You get your bearings and you, you pick who you like. And then you throw a 25% live profit boost on any of the games on Wednesday. We're going to be running that one all season long. We got the Royals, Orioles, Angels, Marlins, Minnesota Twins, and the Brewers. For my 25% live profit boost, I'm just going to throw this one out there. Let me get the Minnesota Twins today. They are going to have a 1.10 p.m. start. Chris Pratic coming off an injury. He, he, he's going to have a nice bounce back year. I, I really okay. believe Chris Pratic is going to have a really nice year for the Twins. They got him on, on a real steal of a contract. I think that they're going to get the Brewers today. So watch the first inning or two. 
maybe even the first pitch, jump right on it. Currently, the Twins are minus 114 on the Bet Parks app. Let's go, Twinnies, and let's go, Chris Pratt. I'm going to throw a live profit boost on that bad boy. So yep, that's for just, all you gamblers out just there. Just to emphasize, you have to place that during the game. During the game, yeah, during the game, live. live, live profit but, boost. That's why they call it a live. And one. guys, tell me about this Marks and Maniac happy hour that we got yeah. going on. Yeah, what is so this? we got something else to look forward to <laughs> every Friday, John. Yes, I am springing this one on you today. I was talking to the guys in the sports department last night. How could we, you know, get John involved in, in you know, making up a special? So every Friday during happy hour, which is happy four hour six. four to six. Yeah. You're going to be able to log on to the Bet Parks app and you're going to be able to place a bet on something that me and John are going to collaborate on each Friday. It could be a no run first inning. It could be a strikeout combination. It could be a parlay. It could be a run line parlay. Whatever you want, we'll, we'll get our minds together. The Marks and Maniac money line parlay, maybe that's what we're going to call it. We'll see. So check back in with us on social media on Friday. We'll have a play for you on the Bet Parks app. You'll log into the app, and it'll be one of the tiles. Right when you log in and you go to the sports book side of the app, you'll see uh, see that tile. Click on that one, and we're going to put a boost on it. So, oh. you know, if the odds are plus 150, maybe you get it for plus 200, you know? So That's it's, it's, a, it's a nice one to follow all season long, and uh, we'll see how we do with that as well. We're going to keep track of how the Phillies do on the days we record. They're already one to know since the announcement of the show. Uh, just Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and we will also keep track of our our our, our earnings. Our Added winning. pressure. Added pressure. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 messing with people's money here. Yeah. I, I guess you just do, for it. Just do Dodgers money line and whoever the the uh, the A's are playing against, take them. So I was actually looking be, at the, the White Sox today are, are plus three hundred against the Braves. Yeah. What's the first inning of that game? Who knows? What yeah, that's happen. the thing in in Chicago. Okay. And I'm yeah, sure Spencer once Strider going. Ooh, Spencer Strider. A lot of fastballs. <laughs> Minus can... three seventy five in some spots. Hey, maybe Luis Robert. He goes. He he runs into one and hits it deep, and, and then you get a get a one nothing lead. Or you see them go down one two three in the first inning. That plus three eighty five is going to be about plus five hundred. So that might be something to look at for a little bit of value. I like where your head's at mm. there, Johnny Marks. I like it. I like it. So before we wrap up, guys, we have a few questions. So from Kevin Bloomfield, what bet are you guys taking for the Phillies game later today against the Reds, assuming that they get it in? Phillies Reds, assuming that they get it in four o'clock. Wheeler on the it, mound, right? Wheeler's, you know, the the, the one minus 177 on the Phillies. I'm I mean, going Phillies. I mean, obviously going Phillies with Wheeler uh, if they get this one in. Minus 177, I mean, it's going to be rare that you're going to get Wheeler at anything under minus 200 throughout the season. The run line. Now you look at that minus one and a half is plus 125. If you're really feeling frisky, maybe you take the, the lay the one and a half runs and you hope Wheeler throws a gem. And maybe we, we uh, have a couple, couple bombs and the Phillies get the bats going. Finally, I like that bet as well, but I think a real safe one would be. Phillies money line minus 177 only on the bet. Post. Over on strikeouts. Ooh. Those are the ones I kind of uh, like. I'm trying to look it up right now as as cold, possible. rainy day. Wheeler's been been pitcher props right here. So been we have pitching Wheeler. great. Hmm, let's see. Over seven and a half is plus a hundred. Oh, mm. that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot of strikeouts. Yeah. Jonathan India doesn't strike out, but you know what? Ellie De La Cruz, man, he has looked pretty bad. He's he's looked bad at the plate. He might account for two or three of them just alone today. So that Reds got their win in the series. It's cold. It's wet. They want to get the hell out of town. They're ready to leave. Take the take the Phillies. Take the over on the strikeouts. Little parlay. Little same game. parlay. It. Little same game parlay. Parlay. It. Over on strikeouts for Wheeler, Phillies to win like the ball it. game. That's our confidence. Bet. There you go. Done. Now, who is the biggest X factor X factor this season between Marsh, Bohm, and Stopped? Me personally, wow. X factor. We know who John's gonna say. He's he loves Alec Bohm. Well, and I think him. it also depends because how much of an X factor can Marsh be if he's platooning? So I think that kind of a might well, eliminate him from this conversation for well, me. That was gonna give him that kind of you, you kind of almost walked right into my answer there. I think the Ooh. X factor is gonna be Marsh because I okay. do not believe in Rojas. And I think that if this experiment that's going on blows up in our faces, 
you're going to need Marsh to kind of step up. I know we have Pache, and maybe Pache and him can platoon, but I, I still don't get it. The guy hits home runs off of left-handers. I've seen him do it. He can hit left-handed pitching. I don't know why they're babying this guy so much. I think that he could just be your everyday center fielder. No, he's not as good defensively, but man, like he's, tw what is he, 26 years old? Like that guy could be the center fielder for the next seven years or so, or six, right. six seven years. I mean, I like him. I like, I like Marsh. I think if he can step up, then we don't have to worry about this Rojas baloney. Well, I, I guess you, you have to look at it and say, what do you expect from, from Stott and from Alec Bohm. I feel like I know what I'm getting with Bohm, maybe 280. He had almost 100 RBIs last year at 20 home runs. So he's he's going to be a quality hitter. Stott feels like, and this I'll answer the question for you, Stott, is this the year where he takes that step into being a Chase Utley type to where he's now becomes an all-star second baseman, where he becomes such a major... When, when he's on, man, he really get, he makes this lineup go... And it's also towards the bottom of the lineup. And I know like they like him back there with Alec Boehm. They kind of, they, they're kind of the vehicle for the bottom of that lineup. But I, I feel like this could be the year for Stott where he takes that step to where he becomes an all-star player instead of just a very good starter. John, I agree with you hundred percent. My answer is Bryson Stott because we did see him be, become such a big asset in those playoffs last year. So if he can carry that over and just continue to grow, which he is because he's mentored by Bryce Harper very, very closely. So I think Stott's going to really take that leap this year. I think he's going to be a huge asset to this team. And we mentioned Trey Turner, if he's having some trouble at shortstop, maybe they flip him there and maybe Stott's able to just seamlessly fit wherever he needs to. So I think that's going to be a big piece. And I think uh, Bryson Stott's going to have a big season. Stott is in, <laughs> Stott's in the same. Stott's Man. almost in the same boat as 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 Marsh. Yeah. They're platooning him too with Whit Merrifield. I mean, like last year, two years ago, I remember somebody telling me, "Oh, they they they, they don't do there's no such thing as platooning anymore in the major leagues." It seems like a lot of teams like are platoons. doing it. Yeah, They're, it seems like it's like a Analytics. really big deal. It's yep. like the '93 yeah. team with the platoons. And yeah, I mean, I guess eventually, like when you got to ante up the dough to Stott or you got to ante up the dough to Marsh, you're not going to back up the Brinks drop and make make them a platoon player. So when are the training wheels going to come off? I I, I don't know. I, I that's another one with with the signing of Whit Merrifield. You've already seen him kind of spell Stott a few times. I don't, I don't know. Well, that's going to be something to keep an eye on in terms of how these guys do against left-handed pitching. And I, real quick, let them go. Lastly, who is the biggest X factor between Soto, Sir Anthony and Hoffman? Pat, you go first because we know your answer. Soto. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> Greg Soto. I love Gregory Soto. I don't care what you say about the guy. I'm going to defend the guy to the death. He throws a hundred miles an hour. He's got filthy stuff. Put him in the eighth inning, give him his role until he blows up entirely. Let this man pitch. He was a closer for years in the AL Central for the Tigers. And he was very, very good. You gave him a lot of money, a shit pot full of money. Let him pitch. And hopefully he can kind of solidify himself as that setup, maybe even the closer role. I don't think that's going to happen. Alvarado probably, but give me Soto as the X. Yeah, I mean, to your point, yeah, if he becomes a dynamic closer back end of the bullpen guy, it's huge. But I'll just say Sir Anthony because he scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Last year in the playoffs, when they brought in Kirkering, I was so happy they brought in Kirkering as opposed to Sir Anthony. And then Kirkering couldn't throw a strike and, and cost them the game. But that's how I felt about Sir Anthony at that time. And I, I don't know if he's going to get that back this year. When you get sometimes with pitchers, you're, yeah, you just, you just never get it back. Hoffman also went from being, they got him for nothing, former first round pick that had, a, that had obviously has upside and he was awesome last year. Is he going to be good again this year? Or does he fall back in the wood? I mean, I actually, so I have the most confidence in Hoffman. Yeah. Okay. That's, I would say that too. I will agree with you there. And, and I was confidence, but the X factor. Yeah. It's Sir Anthony for me. Yeah. I agree. I think Sir Anthony, just because we need him to be back to elite Sir Anthony, we know what he can be. And we've seen glimpses of it, but we just don't see the consistency there. And that changes the bullpen. Back. He changes yeah. the bullpen. He can pitch anywhere. But it, but if he's if he's not that guy, you, you have a huge hole missing in the bullpen. They need him to be that guy. I agree 100%. So, guys, 
that is episode number one of Out of the Parks wow. with John Marks and then say I'm a maniac on the side over here. Um, but we will be back job, every Sam. single Wednesday to talk Phillies, to talk MLB, give our picks um, and just have a good time. Have a good old time. Yeah. Yep. And, go and send me your Phillies mullets. I've already been getting a couple <laughs> after after we saw uh, Maniac Malloy's yesterday. People. So if you have a mullet or you want to make a mullet, Make a mullet and I'll send it to us, and we'll play it on the show. Them. Play it on the show. We have yeah, we can rate the mullets on the TVs. Yeah, we can rate oh, the mullets. Oh, I TVs. love that idea. I'm gonna get this thing shaped up. I'm gonna get my ears lowered a little bit. Uh, Pat, give it a little week. wiggle for the camera. Oh, oh, wiggle yeah, wiggle you do that so naturally. <laughs> yeah, it's thin hair, naturally. straight hair. Awesome. Okay, so great first episode, guys, and yes. we'll see you guys next week. All right, we'll talk to you then. Later.